So we've um, just received an email, me and Debbie, from Robert Kennedy Jr.'s people to say that they've received a copy of Climate Fake that we sent them. And Robert Kennedy's now in, involved with Dame Wigginton in bringing uh, this geoengineering bollocks to the fore, this um, climate fake to the fore, to people's knowledge. Uh, then we can eventually get it stopped. Robert Kennedy Jr. is running for presidency in the next American elections. I have no horse in that race. I've never voted over here in the UK, never mind. You know, if I were in the States, I still wouldn't vote because, you know, it is what it is and I'm not part of that circle. But this guy stood up against a hell of a lot of things. Some things that I can't mention here, but I can mention um, the climate uh, and pollution and all the other stuff that he stands against. Come on, Elk. So we have to um, hope now that between him, uh, Senator Rennick and the others, politicians that have got copies of the climate fake now can run with it, basically. <laughs> can do more with it than I can. Because basically we've been gatherers of the information and the evidence. Okay, so let's take a quick look at Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s profile. I'm using Wikipedia, unfortunately. Um, it's got the information. I don't think they can lie about it on here. Robert Francis Kennedy Jr. was born January the 17th, 1954. and is an American environmental lawyer, a member of the prominent Kennedy family, a 2024 Democratic Party presidential candidate, and an author known for promoting the anti-vaccine propaganda and health-related conspiracy theories. Hmm, my kind of guy. Kennedy is a son of U.S. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and nephew of President John F. Kennedy. After growing up in the Washington, D.C. area and Massachusetts, he graduated from Harvard University and obtained his Juris Doctor degree from the University of Virginia School of Law. Kennedy began his career as an assistant district attorney in New York City. In 1984, he joined Riverkeeper and the National Resources Defence Council. In 1986, two non-profits focused on environmental protection. He became an adjunct professor of environmental law at Pace University School of Law in 1986. In 1987, he founded the Pace Law School's Environmental Litigation Clinic where he held the post of supervising attorney and co-director until 2017. He founded the non-profit environmental group Waterkeeper Alliance in 1999, serving as a president of its board. There was a discussion in the press that the first Obama administration was possibly considering him as a candidate for administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, but his controversial statements an arrest for heroin possession in the 1980s made him unlikely to receive Senate confirmation. Since 2005, he has promoted the scientifically discredited link between vaccines and autism and is founder and chairman of Children's Health Defence, an anti-vaccine advocacy group. Since the onset of the old COVID, Kennedy has emerged as a leading proponent of the uh, CV-19 vaccine misinformation in the United States. Kennedy has co-hosted Ring of Fire, a nationally syndicated radio program, and written or edited 10 books. In April 2023, Kennedy announced his candidacy for the Democratic nomination in the 2024 presidential election. Early Life and Education Kennedy grew up at his family's home in McLean, Virginia and Cape Cod, Massachusetts. He was nine years old when his uncle, President John F. Kennedy, was assassinated in 1963 and 14 years old when his father was assassinated while running for the Democratic presidential nomination in 1968. So, 
Are they next in line? They say bad news comes in freeze. So I'll leave a link to this if you're interested. But, um, like I say, it's a family of those that were assassinated for speaking out against the system. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. I pledge you that we shall neither commit nor provoke aggression, that we shall neither flee nor invoke the threat of force, that we shall never negotiate out of fear, and we shall never fear to negotiate. I have therefore chosen this time and place to discuss a topic on which ignorance too often abounds and the truth too rarely perceived, and that is the most important topic on earth, peace. What kind of a peace do I mean and what kind of a peace do we seek? Not a Pax Americana enforced on the world by American weapons of war, not the peace of the grave or the security of the slave, I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living, the, the kind that enables men and nations to grow and to hope and build a better life for their children. Not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Not merely peace in our time, but peace in all time. All right, let's talk about this. Why is YouTube censoring and banning content that includes interviews with presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr.? Oh, I think I found the reason. Could it have something to do with big trouble for Team Biden? Last week, we saw a new poll that came out showing that Robert Kennedy Jr. surging in early polls. Uh, that poll was among Democrats and RFK Jr. in another poll at 21%. Other polls have him at 19%. So 21%, 19%. That's, uh, that's terrible news for President Biden. That amount is enough to dethrone President Biden. So, of course, the deep state absolutely does not want this guy on the ticket, does not want to influence an election, be there involved in this in any way because they need their guy, their deep state puppet, their sort of meat bag, which is President Biden. They shuffle him out for a few hours. This is what the deep state wants. So why is YouTube actively going through and like silencing videos? In fact, friend of the show, uh, she's been on the show, friend of the show, Kim Iverson. Um, she got a strike on her channel for an interview that she did back in February with Robert Kennedy Jr. about COVID. Uh, she says the powers that be are an intense censorship campaign to protect POTUS now that RFK Jr. is polling at 19 percent. And of course, I just mentioned a new poll out with 21 percent among Biden voters and climbing so she got and here's the youtube this is from youtube to kim our our team has reviewed your content and unfortunately we think it violates our medical misinformation policy so an interview that she did with a presidential candidate who's been an outspoken advocate for health uh, and, and and human rights and people's rights as it related to the pandemic well, so, he's a litigator, yeah. so he's been specifically critical of mandates, how it's cost people their livelihood, and what is the documentation about efficacy about the rollout during the pandemic. Now, those are things that he has 
copious amounts of data on, and we're going to talk more about what his data is when we talk about ABC, uh, but why then go back months and months and find these videos and remove them unless it's striking a nerve. Yeah, exactly. And to silence this guy. Exactly. And to silence this guy. Exactly. And to silence this guy. Right. And so these videos, of course, have had hundreds of thousands, millions of views across all of these different YouTubers. Here's another one. Erin Elizabeth from uh, Health Nut News. She she uh, tweeted. She said, not only did my interview with RFK Jr. get banned that I did with Bobby Kennedy, but both of us got banned. And on the same day, along with Joe, a.k.a. Dr. Mercola and Sherry Tenpenny, YouTube changed their policy just to do that to us, which is why they are currently being sued for it. So and then another one, not to be outdone, dark journalist um, tweets. So YouTube randomly decided to ban my interview with RFK Jr. from a year ago. <laughs> has, I wonder if it has anything to do with him running for president now. So on the same day, YouTube suddenly banned or took down copyright st uh, struck and just removed like three multiple videos i mean at least three that i know of four maybe more maybe more than that that i've been able, been able to find and of course last week before all of these interviews started being removed by youtube this happened and we are honored to have him on our show tonight he joins us now bobby thanks so much for coming on um, so you are, of course, being dismissed as a vaccine nut, but watching your announcement today, it wasn't about pharma even so much as it was about America's place in the world and what do we do about it. If you wouldn't mind summarizing for our viewers. Yeah, so that happened. So then he goes on Tucker, and then, of course, RFK Jr. then said uh, later after then Tucker was uh, unceremoniously pushed out at Fox, and we still don't know the what exactly happened there. Uh, RFK came out and said, "said what?" He tweeted and said, "Well, one day after uh, he has me on the air, um, Tucker's let go. Yeah, Tucker's removed from the airwaves." Go ahead. Just one thing that's kind of a positive out of this negative is that if they're doing that, that means they are legitimately scared of him. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you said, Natalie, they, he struck a nerve. And it's fear because they don't want him to become more popular by getting more exposure. So that is a positive that he is actually a threat. So now, though, you have RFK Jr., who's speaking out against the powers that be, says he wants to end military bases, U.S. military occupation around the world, bring the troops back home. He wants to prosecute people who pushed mandates and covidism on the American people. Right. This cannot fly. So, of course, YouTube swept in, started deleting these videos, copyright striking people, mi medical misinformation on people like him and others. Uh, really, really awful. Um, and then, of course, you see this in the mainstream media and the mainstream broadcast media like ABC News. So ABC News sits down and does an interview with him and then is caught later admitting that they cut out huge swaths of the interview when he was explaining his position on covid and vaccines and other things, totally deleted it, didn't let it air on the show and edited down uh, contextually what they wanted before they released it. Um, and then after the interview, she comes out there and reads a prepared statement by ABC News, like prepared, I don't know, by their lawyers or, or some of their big pharma backers. I don't know. But this is what she read after the interview that she did with Robert Kennedy Jr. and had this to say from ABC's Corporate Watch. We should note that during our conversation, Kennedy made false claims about the COVID-19 vaccines. Data shows that the COVID-19 vaccines prevented millions of hospitalizations and deaths from the disease. He also made misleading claims about the relationship between vaccination and autism. Research shows that vaccines and the ingredients used for the vaccines do not cause autism, including multiple studies involving more than a million children and major medical associations like the American Academy of Pediatrics and the advocacy group autism speaks we've used our editorial judgment and in not including extended portions of that exchange in our interview we thank mr kennedy for the conversation um so there are a lot of holes in that she's just blanketly saying that she didn't bring her she didn't bring her homework she's just saying this because you know her corporate backers are making her say it uh but robert f kennedy says it, he he said this on on twitter when he was referring to this interview he said i brought data to show to back this up i was willing to show these things they didn't let me do you want to read his statement Go ahead. yeah he says 
Well, he says 47 U.S.C. 315 makes it illegal for TV networks to censor presidential candidates. But Thursday, ABC showed its contempt for the law, democracy, and its audience by cutting most of the content of my interview with host Lindsey Davis, leaving only cherry-picked snippets and a defamatory disclaimer. Offering no evidence, ABC justified this act of censorship by falsely asserting that I made false claims. In truth, Davis engaged me in a lively, informative, and mutually respectful debate on the government's COVID measures, countermeasures. I'm happy to supply citations to support every statement I made in that exchange. I'm certain ABC's decision to censor came as a shock to Lindsay as well. And I love that he's giving her the benefit of the doubt because, I mean, I don't know, but she's clearly reading. This is the problem with corporate media is that she wants her job. She wants to go on The View. She wants to be on ABC. She wants this money. She wants that contract. Well, let's not say what she wants or how she felt about it. Like, okay, maybe she doesn't know. want the job. Maybe she doesn't want to be on the maybe, view. Maybe, you know, in the context like the of that tweet, when you watch her say that, you wonder your, to yourself, is she pained to say this? That's my point. That's my what I'm, that's what pained, I'm saying. Pained, not pained. paid. That's what I'm saying. Well, my point is that at the end of the day, she has a choice. She can walk out of there and say, I'm, I'm not reading this. Sure. I'm not reading this and have... Content, say, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm quitting. Yeah, I'm not going to read this. But at the end of the day, she sat there and literally read from a teleprompter yeah. what they gave to her to say. So she is part of the problem. She could have walked out of there and said, I'm not doing that. Um, but the censorship didn't stop there. Of course, then uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. also on the Piers Morgan show. So the Piers Morgan, I love the name of the show, is Uncensored. Um, and so Piers Morgan cuts him off, calls him you know, calls him kind of calls him names and he has to justify himself and he's explaining his position on it. And then, of course, then they have to just shut the interview off. Sorry, we're done. Sorry, we're out of time. We got to we're done. Bye. Bye, everyone. Watch. I'll give you an example. We in our country, we're the most have one of the most heavily vaccinated countries in the world. We also had the highest COVID death rate in the world. So we had we have four point two percent of the global population. We have 16 percent of the, of the COVID deaths. That's not a success story. How can anybody point well, to that listen, and say, I, we, unfortunately, yeah, the vaccines were a benefit? Listen, we've run out of time. Look, I certainly look don't. At, look at yeah, my, listen, I, I've got to end it. Can you play that clip again? I want you to notice the timestamp on this interview, right? So typically a television show runs for an hour, right? So from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., okay? And I get it. You've got satellites that will switch off. And when this happened on Fox, they would literally, this, the satellite feed would switch off. So we would, be, no matter what we were saying, it was like an automatic computer thing that would shut you down, okay? I get that. Here, you literally have the timestamp. There's 10 minutes still left in this show. And the name of the show is Piers Morgan Uncensored. He's not out of time. He could absolutely do whatever he wants. He is Piers Morgan Uncensored. It's his show. He could say, producers, we're having a lively discussion here. I want to cancel whatever break we've got right now. We're not out of time. I want to hear what this man has to say. Instead, he chooses to shut him down. But look at the timestamp on this. He's not up against a hard break. I'll give you an example. See, 20. Country. He's got 10 minutes left in the hour. 10 minutes left in the hour. What is that, 8 p.m., almost 9 p.m.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, we had, so he had 10 minutes left in this. He could do whatever he wants. My point is that he is being shut down. His commentary, his analysis, his position is being blocked. It is being censored. It is being taken off of mainstream media. Um, and, you know, uh, the interview I referenced earlier with Sagar, who was on Russell Brand recently, he was talking about how as corporate media and mainstream media begins to lose their stronghold as the center of all media, it's going to get worse for those of us in independent media because they're going to, because they set the rules. We saw that over the Twitter files. Mainstream media was saying, hey, go out and watch this guy, censor this guy, don't let that guy say these things. And so independent creators like us were, have been punished left and right at increasing numbers since the pandemic. That will get worse. Uh, which is extremely hard for us because Clayton and I and our team here, we're always trying to figure out how can we say things within the rules of these paradigms because you're here and we're here and we want to be able to communicate with each other. But we know that we're playing with um, a moving target at this point. And we do think it will get worse as these people lose their power until they don't have that power anymore. And I only bring comfort to myself by just thinking you just got to hold on hold on and get to the other side of it because I have faith in a different 
system. One thing that I wanted to say, like you were talking about uh, the pandemic, or I don't remember anything pre COVID where they censored like this. Like, I think that that was the, the line where they started doing that. Cause I, I tried to think back to other things that they had, they had censored or, or other, um, you know, issues. And I can't think of one. So I think no. that that's right when it's, I have never yeah, and, on and, YouTube had that issue for, I've been on YouTube yeah. for many, many years and I've never had that issue before. Like that, what we're talking about is actual suppression, actual censorship Go ahead. Of, of words and thoughts. Yeah. yeah. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control.